that's it. So you should be able to see my hands and my feet. And unfortunately, because of the time of day, I'm in the shaft of light and it's, um, it's unfortunate. But I'm sure we can work with that. Okay, so before we start practice, um, it's worth just taking a moment to come into a comfortable stance. Now, if you find that it's, it's easier to work seated, the same applies. If you can find a place to sit that the arms are free to move at the sides and the body is, is in a relaxed state so the breath travels freely, this is the ideal way for it to be. So whether you're standing or seated, take a moment to relax, to allow the breath to settle. And then we'll start to go through some opening exercises, some pieces that help the body to relax more and to open up more. So we'll start by bringing focus into the neck, mobilizing the neck. So no specific movements here, maybe turning the neck, maybe rolling the neck. All we're trying to do is open up the space between the vertebra. So create space in the neck. Give it the ability to move. Okay, and then once the neck has opened up a little bit, we'll come into a central position with the head. And there's an instruction of lift Bahwe. Bahwe is the crown. So we just draw the crown up gently in order to open up the space in the vertebra. It's not a stretch, it's an opening. Then we shift the awareness from the neck down the spine into the mid spine, the space between the shoulder blades. And here, draw the shoulder blades together. And then open the shoulder blades apart. So squeeze the shoulder blades in, release the shoulder blades apart. Couple more, squeeze in, release out. So the mid spine here is also responding as you squeeze in and as you release, you're creating movement in the spine and opening the space between the vertebra. And this time when you squeeze in, you can take this into rolling the shoulders. So whichever way you want to take it, Bring the shoulders in and roll the shoulders. And as you roll the shoulders, notice the shoulder blades moving. So we're looking for a movement that has no tension, or we're looking for a movement that releases the tension and creates space. The shoulders, we can draw awareness into the elbows. We can start to mobilize the elbows. From the elbows, we can shift the awareness into the wrists. From the wrists, we can go into the hands, and the hands, we can go into the fingers. So here we're releasing out from the spine all the way out to the tip fingertips. Just creating space, opening up. Then allowing the hands to settle out to the sides and turn the waist one side to the other. So keeping the hips fairly steady. And here we're mobilizing the lumbar spine, turning the lower back, just gently, creating space. Almost absent-minded, very relaxed. few more times. And then allowing the movement to subside, allowing the movement to reduce down. So 
So the lumbar spine has been mobilized and we now shift awareness further down into the pelvic area and all the way down to the tailbone and into the hips. So here I like to put hands on the actual hips and then rotate the tailbone. So it can be quite a small movement, it can be a far bigger movement, but we're just looking at that idea of the tailbone is circling and we can feel the hips moving. Ideally the movement is between the lowest rib and the knees. Doesn't matter which direction, just creating movement in the hips by circling tailbone. Keeping the circles going, taking the hands away and allowing the circling to sort of relax so it's the whole body. So now everything is starting to move. We can start to shift the awareness into the bottom of the feet and shifting the weight around the bottom of the feet. So allow the movement to change. Allow the bottom of the feet to soften and relax. The ankle was mobile. The knees soft. It's the whole of the legs relaxed and yong chuan with bubbling spring. It's the balls of the feet. We have an idea of the balls of the feet are relaxed and open so we can connect down into the earth. And to help this along, raise the hands up and on the out breath, push down as if connecting down into the earth. And on the in breath, draw chi up into the lower abdomen, into the lower dentin in the abdomen. So out breath expands out. In breath gathers in. Expanding out. Gathering in. Expand out. Gather in. Couple more, expanding out. Gathering in. Then the next time the hands draw up to lower dentin, allow them to pause at lower dentin. The physical accuracy here is unimportant, it's the idea that's important. So if the hand movement helps you to connect down into the earth and then connect back up to lower dentin, it's perfect. And the hands can settle at lower dentin. Then we'll allow the hands to rise up as if traveling up through the spine, opening up the spine, connecting up into blue sky and draw blue sky down into lower dantean. So expanding up, opening up the spine, creating space, drawing blue sky down through that space we've created in the spine. Couple more, expanding up. Gather down. Expand up. Gather down. Okay, the next time the hands come down in front of lower dente and allow them to pause in front of lower dente. And then one more direction, we've expanded down, we've expanded up. Then we open the elbows, open out, draw chi back. 
one more. Releasing out and gathering back. Hands pausing in front of the body and notice the space inside. So maybe this is the space between thoughts. Maybe it's simply noticing how easily the breath is moving now. Just noticing inside. From inside, we can expand the awareness out slightly into the space immediately around ourselves. As we do this, we allow the awareness to be bigger than the body. So the physical boundaries of the body blur slightly. This chi field, this awareness is bigger than the body. And then we can expand out again. And this time notice all of these people in shared practice, all of these people connected, all of us connected, everybody supported, everybody supporting, one chi field. Then we can expand this chi field out further still, out into blue sky, out into Hunyuan Chi, everything connected, everyone supported, everyone supporting. And then we gently draw the awareness back, back inside, with an idea, and the idea that we will practice with here is she is flowing well. The body is relaxed and she is flowing well. Then relax the hands to the sides. So this is how we prepare for Qigong practice. We relax the body, we quieten the mind. We expand out in all directions, and then we draw back with an intention. Chi flowing well, body relaxed. We we'll start the practice today by turning the thumbs forwards. And as you turn the thumbs forwards, just gently open the front of the body. And as you turn the thumbs back, gently open the shoulder blades and the spine. So thumbs forwards, open the front, thumbs back, open the back, open the front, and open the back, very gentle. Start with very small movements. Front and back. And then gradually we'll increase the size of the movement. So the thumbs turn a little bit further, maybe the hands rise up slightly at the front. And when the thumbs turn back, the body bows down a little bit. So it opens a little bit more of the back. And each time we move a slightly bigger movement. So to start with, what we do is we coordinate this with the breath. So as the hands rise and the thumbs are opening away from the hands, this is a natural in-breath. And as the body bows down and the thumbs turn back, this is a natural out-breath. Squeezes the lungs, blows the air out of the lungs. And we rise up and breathe in. So at the speed of your breath, Bow body down. Then open the front of the body and breathe in. Stay with this a few times.
So it's about making sure the movement supports the idea and all the idea is, is breathing in, opening the lungs, breathing in blue sky, bending down, opening the back, squeezing the lungs, allowing all the air out before drawing in the next load of blue sky. And then we can start to make the movement bigger still. So we can shift awareness away from the breath. We may still be with the breath, but here, when the arms open up, open the whole of the front of the body, all the way up to the tips of the fingers. And then when the body bows down, open the whole of the back. Keeping the legs straight, opening down into the tips of the toes. So it's opening the front of the body as you rise up. Open the back as you bow down. If you're seated, this works as well. It's mobilizing the spine. As you rise up, notice all the way, all the front of the body up to the tips of the fingers. As you bow down, notice the lower body down to the toes. So here we're working on Ren Mai and Du Mai, the two central channels. The channel that runs up the back and the channel that runs down the front. And when you open these two channels, all the other meridians, all the other channels open up. So this works everything. This mobilizes everything. few more times. Then the next time the hands get to the top, not this time, the next time, we can allow the hands to stay at the top, connected up into blue sky, and allow the body to gently move. So nothing is completely stationary. So here we can open the back just by moving forward slightly and open the front by moving back slightly. Body moving naturally. Then the fingers connect up into the blue sky and draw chi down. And here we're going to bring awareness into all of the bones in the body. So coming into the top of the neck, drawing awareness down each vertebra of the spine through the neck, through the mid spine, through the lumbar, all the way down to the tip of the tailbone, up into the hips, down through the legs, down to the knees, down to the ankles, if you can't reach, doesn't matter, down through the feet, through the toes, and at the bottom, lift chi up. Draw chi down. So as we come down through the bones, we bring awareness into the marrow. The marrow is bright and healthy. And in Chinese medicine, the spinal column and the brain are both marrow, so both bright and healthy. Tip of the tailbone, up to the hips, down through the legs. Marrow is bright. Gather chi and lift chi up. Draw chi down. Last time down through all of the bones. Chi is abundant. Marrow is bright. So the next time the hands get to the top, allow them to pause at the top. Body moving freely. And here we're going to go straight into something called Tai Chi Bo. But before we do, we'll draw the Chi down. 
Notice the space in the center of the head, the brightness, the clarity in the center of the head, down into the center of the chest, down into the center of the abdomen, and more specifically, just in front of the spine. Okay, allow the hands to connect down into the earth. Lift she up. Draw chi down into upper dentaean, the space in the center of the head. Into middle dentaean, the space in the center of the chest. And into lower dentaean, the space in the center of the abdomen. Out the hips, down through the legs. One last time, lift chi up. Draw chi down from upper dantian in the head into middle dantian in the chest and arriving at lower dantian and pausing at lower dantian. Hands facing lower dantian. Body relaxed and centered. And then to start the Tai Chi ball practice, one hand, doesn't matter which, reaches out, gathers blue sky, and draws blue sky back in towards lower dantian. Then the other hand reaches out, gathers blue sky, and draws blue sky back into lower dantian. So we move gently from one side to the other, drawing chi back in. So work with this at whatever place you feel comfortable to work. Try to keep the spine quite upright. So avoid the temptation. And I see, see this a few times where people reach out and gather like this. Just drawing chi back, keeping the spine quite upright, but allowing the body to turn as you do this. So if you're standing, you can feel this working. The legs, it turns the legs. It opens up the joints in the legs. It mobilizes the hips. If you're seated, you can feel the way that it shifts the weight around and opens up the spine. But you can be very gentle with it and you can work with it as you want, gathering chi back in, drawing blue sky back inside. few more times. Then the next time the hands come back in front of lower dantaean, allow them to pause in front of lower dantaean. And then we will do the same movement, but both hands at the same time. So both hands spiral out and gather back. And as they gather back, squat down slightly, gathering into lower dantaean. They spiral out into blue sky, the body lifts up, gather chi, draw blue sky back. Gather chi, expand out, and gather chi. Spiral out, gather chi. Last time, all the way out, draw chi back. Take a moment to be centered and quiet. And then for Tai Chi ball, we turn the palms to face up and the hands spiral up with the palms facing up, up into blue sky. Connecting up into blue sky, the front of the body is open and we pause just here. Okay, the thumbs draw forwards. If you can keep the palms facing up, please do, and allow the hands to spiral out to the sides, connecting out into the far distance and pause. 
trick here is for the mind to be expanded out into the far distance. If the mind stays in the body, then we can quite often see bits that are uncomfortable. But we can use this to train the mind to go beyond. Then draw the thumbs back under the armpits, gather into lower dantian and spiral up. So the important part here is the spiraling up. Spiral out and back, however the hands move today, that's fine. Then lift chi up through the body. Out and back. Gather in. Rising up. Out. And back. Up. and back. A couple more times. Up. Out. And back. One. Up. Out. And back. And then this lift up to the top and we pause at the top. Connected up into blue sky. And then we reverse the movement. So now we draw chi down the center of the body. So back down through upper dantian, through middle dantian to lower dantian. And at the bottom, little fingers push back. The hands spiral out and up. And again, unimportant really how they get there. The important bit is draw chi down. Draw chi down, spiraling out and up. Draw chi down, draw chi down. A few more times in your own time, spiraling out and up, however works for you, and then drawing chi down through the entire body from upper to middle to lower dentin. Then the next time the hands get to the top, allow them to pause at the top again, connected up into blue sky. And as they're paused, you can gently draw the feet together. Then repeat the movement. Now it's more subtle. So we draw down through upper dantian, through the space in the head, down through the center of the chest, into lower dantian. Little fingers push back, hands spiral out and up. Draw chi down. Very quiet, very gentle. Drawing chi down into lower dantian. Once more. Out. And up. And as you draw chi down this time, take a moment in upper dantian, in the space in the head. Notice the space in the head. Gently drawing down into the center of the chest. Just noticing the space in the center of the chest. And then gently allowing this to sink down into lower dantian, the space in the abdomen. Lower dantian is where we said we can keep our chi. We can store our chi. So take a moment here to fill this space with blue sky. Fill this space with potential. And then to keep the practice really simple, relax the hands to the sides. And to end the practice, expand the hands out in front and draw chi back, 
bring the hands back. One hand rests on top of the other on the navel and the mind rests in lower dentine. Huang huang hu hu, kung kung dan dan. Huang huang hu hu, kung kung dan dan means empty, but not empty. We're full of chi, we're full of potential, but we're relaxed and effortless, doing nothing with it. Just enjoying being full of blue sky. Then relax the hands to the sides and gently ease out. Come back into the space, wiggle the fingers, move the body, open the eyes. Okay, we'd normally finish practice with a joyful exclamation in Mandarin, which is how la. We'll do that at the end of the second practice. So, thank you. And um, let's have a chat. Let's see how that was. So I'll just switch across to the other camera. And, uh, yes. So how do people find that? I'm assuming people are still connected. I'm getting nothing still from this end. Oh, it's exceptional. Just what I needed today. Thank you. Yes, I've missed it during the last nine weeks or so. And uh, uh, it's different to get the same. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's very good. It's as you said, it stills the mind quite, is it? The mind. And, uh, really does. Mm -hmm. really Unbelievable, really. <laughs> the tension in my neck and shoulders has eased a lot. Yeah, neck and shoulders is a real place that it's really good to bring the work in. Um, and also hips is another place we can do a lot of work as well. Um, and the words just... Space. I can feel the space. Is it when you talk about the space, the blue sky, I can actually feel it yeah. Yeah, opening up. Yeah, I was going to say that, that it, you do the movements, but then you add the words like space and it changes it somehow, doesn't it? Changes your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's always, when I first trained uh, to teach, one of the people who was on the teacher training was the person that introduced me to this form of Qigong. And she'd always be saying, but what's the mind doing? But what's the mind doing? And everyone was going, what do you mean, what's the mind doing? Uh, and it's only once you start working with these, with, with the images and with the ideas and the words, with the movement, that you go, that's what she meant. It is. It's when body and mind work together, you get something amazing. Definitely centers you. <laughs> Do people feel as if they can remember those movements and use those movements outside of this session? Yes. Um, hopefully. Yeah. I'd do it a few more times before I can feel confident that I'd have that as a practice. Okay. Um, if I... Uh, my, um, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Unfortunately, my internet connection has not been very good and I've missed certain parts, but I'll be back next time. Okay. Most of this stuff is, is going up online. Um, I'm trying to record... Oh, great sections of it so that the the main pieces that we use within the practice there's going to be short explainer videos um up on up on the parkinson's Fantastic. care website that would be really helpful yeah that'd be great yeah the the problem I, practice, that I know i'm not getting the, the movements quite right when i do it myself so it's good to to actually be able to refer back to it at another point during the week between the sessions yeah i feel yeah. the same way yeah, yeah there's so, so certainly with things like the Tai Chi ball, there's, there's ways that you can tune the movement up to get maximum benefit from it. But for the other mm. movements, then notice where you are on any given day. And um, I'm of the opinion that we never get it right, but it's always perfect. For the person who's doing it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I'm on a mini iPad, so I see, find it difficult to see all the moves. Right. Screen is quite small. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't think it is worth getting too caught up in the detail, if I'm honest. Um, the only the, one that I really go into detail in in the videos is the Tai Chi ball practice. And what I do for that is I use, um, I use a prop. So I've got these little teacups that I use. And if you get something in the palm of your hand and you are able to actually lift it up, spiral it out and then draw it back. That would be risky. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the trick is that get something that, the, the, that you can grab hold of if you need to. So if it goes upside down, it doesn't matter. The best time yeah. Yes, I've, thre I've threatened to take a, a load of plates along when we've done that, I must admit, and see if we can actually do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I must admit, I've got a box full of these little cups, and, and if people are getting sort of smart about it, I fill them up with water and say, now, now try. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there's something, it, it doesn't matter what it is, but if you put something in your hand, and you work with that idea of spiral it up, spiral it out, and draw it back and obviously I'm doing a far smaller version of it that will help to move the arm in a different way and so you can use a prop to help um, mm -hmm. develop the movement mm -hmm. having said that uh, in the video which hopefully is going to be of a good enough quality that we can upload it this time I have horrendous problems with sound on my pre-recorded videos um, I talk about the fact that we should really be using symmetrical movement one of the pieces that's come up with people I've worked with with Parkinson's in the past is that if you have a weakness on one side, if you use this side and then you use this side, you can reinforce the idea that you've got a weaker side. Yeah. Whereas if you use both sides at the same time, you tend to find that the weaker side compensates and has more movement and more strength in it. And it's right. a better way of actually building up, building up that balance again. Mm. John, how do you cope with pain? I mean, I want to bang on. <laughs> um, this is upper arm, shoulder, neck. And I mean, it's helping, but still, simple movements are quite painful. I've heard that that affects different people. Okay. Um, um, this is something quite new for me, um, the pain. <laughs> Yeah, there's there, there there's a couple of things that I would I, I would say, and as I say, unfortunately, I've got no video feed, so I'm I'm sort of talking to thin air slightly, which makes it difficult to give really specifics. But the first thing that you can work with is that quite often when you have pain, to me, pain always feels as if there's sort of a, a, a constriction there, something's mm -hmm. tightening up. Yep. So um, if you can create a little bit of space in that area you can quite often help, help to ease things off. Now, the, the way you create the space is also really important. I quite often use the jam jar analogy. If you have a jam jar and it's stuck and you give it to somebody to, get, to ask them to, to help you take the lid off, you're not actually asking them to take the lid off. What you're asking them to do is loosen it enough so that you can do the work. Yeah. And it's a bit like that when, when you use the movements within Qigong, especially when you're trying to create the space. Do enough of a movement to create a little bit of space. But if, if for example, you're working on the neck, then quite often just, you know, a very small movement could be all you need. And then you can, you know, then you can look at the, at the big movements at some other point. That's just trying to get the form right. The bit that's powerful is to just create a small movement in that part of the body and sometimes you can also help it by creating a little bit of tension or tightening it up and then letting it go as well those can work so that's the sort of practical answer um, the less practical answer <laughs> which I am um, this is the one that I, I I'd love to see people's faces as I give this because it will give it'll give an idea of how useful this actually is is that pain exists within the physical body. Um, so when we move into the Qigong state, that piece we do at the beginning, where we really go into a state of relaxation, and then in that very relaxed state, we, we allow the awareness to expand out slightly beyond the physical body. In that state, it's possible to let go 
of feelings of pain. Mm. Now, I'm going to hold my hand up here because um, in January, I got, I, got, I got rushed into hospital with gallstones. Um, I, I knew what they were, but unfortunately, the person on the end of the phone on 111 <laughs> thought that it might be a heart attack so 18 minutes later there was an ambulance on the drive and this happened twice in a week um and the pain was was not quite as bad as kidney stones they 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 sort of ranked way up there but gallstones were pretty high as well um and in that state i found it quite difficult to get the pain under control straight away um I, it, it could take me as long as an hour to, 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 to become pain-free when I'd had these attacks. And on this particular occasion, it had been an hour and I hadn't managed to get it under control. So sometimes the techniques work really well. Sometimes other stuff's going on. But in that situation, there's also a question about how, how, how you work with it. Um, so, yeah, the, to me, it's an experience and you work with the experience and you can find a way through it. But I say, I've, I've not had the, the Parkinson's experience. So it, it's glib of me to make any comment on that at all. I've only had other things going on. I'm, I'm not sure if that's helpful or not. Very nice. And this has been helpful as well. You know, I can do more than I could a few weeks ago. So. Wonderful. Can I ask something about um, the energy itself because I feel that as a tremor I mean I don't have a tremor as in my Parkinson's condition but I do have um, stiffness and rigidity but when I'm doing this practice I found that the energy starts to move and I start to shake yep. is that a good sign? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say good um, and the reason I wouldn't say good um, one of the things that um, one of the practices that we use when we're going deep into the practice is something called three centers merge and it's a standing meditation practice. And so uh, I'll just see if I can show you on the screen. Yeah, I'm sort of on the screen there. So we stand in this posture. And we hold it for if you're training out in China, you'd hold that for two hours or so. Um, now, one of the things that happens when you're holding the posture is that you will have periods of shaking within the body. Um, and it's a natural response. Um, in much the same way as sometimes when you'll see I draw you down, things sort of move in a slightly funky way. Um, the idea is that when, when things are releasing, when we're creating space, quite often the physical manifestation of that is going to be a shake or it's going to be a movement of some kind. So when we experience shaking within the practice quite often it can be space opening up it can be something changing That's so, good, isn't it? so yeah this is a good thing but the problem is that it's also quite seductive so if you're standing on a rooftop in in a rooftop in china for two to three hours <laughs> yeah and, and suddenly the body starts doing this and you're going you know what i can waste half an hour just doing this because it feels great <laughs> yeah um, whenever it happens, we, we, we need to be asking the question of, of when will it pass? Okay. But enjoy the experience when it's there and, and, and allow it to pass. And interestingly, there's a guy who, you might have seen the video of him actually, he was interviewed um, by Parkinson's Care and Support. <laughs> um, and, he, and I've spoken to him about uh, some of the practices <clears throat> of his tremor. <laughs> Um, and the way that he works with the tremor then is also quite interesting because he, he, stopped, he stopped trying to control it. He, st he stopped allowing it to be, to sort of rule him in the sense he's trying to take control of it. He just allows it to be within the practice and, and that tends to release. Um, if it becomes a distraction in the practice, then he'll stop that particular movement and he'll work just with the mind. But there's a question about how you work with it that I think is also quite interesting. So ho hopefully that was useful. Yes, thank you. I see it as a release, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the short answer I should have given. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Are there, are there any other questions or, or, or observations before we move into the final section? 
I'll just say, John, that um, if I disappear, it's because my battery's go gone. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, I will just add one little bit to it, which is if you do disappear in this section, if I can just ask you to close by drawing the hands back onto the navel and just take a few moments just to be inside. Um, it just concludes the practice in a comfortable way. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Let's dive into the last section of practice. We have about eight minutes left, I think. Yeah, no, nine minutes left. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to come into a practice called La Chi. And La Chi is the non-physical practice. So this is a way of actually allowing the whole body just to be in this chi, in this chi state. So this can be a very useful one for all kinds of things, but we'll just go in with a very soft intention and have a play. So I'll switch cameras and mute everybody again. And then we can come back and have a chat once we finish this practice, or if you need to disappear off, please disappear off. Okay, so a comfortable stance. And this time I'm going to stand with feet together. Now the reason I'm standing with feet together is when we're in the non-physical practices, we tend to create a single connection going down and a single connection rising up. It means that we can work in a softer way. Uh, I'm just going to change the video here quickly. So feet together, single connection going down, single connection rising up. Um, this is as opposed to the sort of the, the, the extreme opposite is the, is the horse stance, is, is the posture, where we have this connection, this connection, and this connection. This becomes the center. Whereas here, this is a softer posture. But in this posture, there's a detail. And the detail is something called lift hui yin. So if you can imagine the hands in front of you, if you bring the hands in front and imagine you're cradling something precious, what you'll find is the fingertips rise up slightly. The fingers are slightly curled. And if you straighten the fingers, it doesn't give that impression of cradling something precious. So there's a slight upward turn in the fingers. Hui Yin is in the center of the pelvic area and the pelvis cradles something precious. It cradles something you, it, it cradles you. So this lift Hui Yin is, is using the pelvis as the cradle of your energy. So lift Hui Yin is just a gentle cradling within the bottom of the pelvic area. And lift Hui, uh, lift Ba Hui, lift the crown. So the whole of the spine is open. Body is centered and upright. In Chinese, the, the, the word for, or the tone that we use for relax is sung. So we'll just use this tone in order to allow the body to soften. If you'd like to join in, please join in. You can do it very, very quietly, um, but allow the body to sway and relax. So... Couple more times. So... One more. body relaxed. Allow the arms to expand out to the sides and draw back 
in front of lower dantian. And you can choose any part of the body to do this on, but we'll start with lower dantian. And when the hands expand out, the sound for expand or the word for expand is kai. And when they draw back, it's her. But as you do this, a bit like the last practice, when you expand out, lift Bahui, lift the crown. Imagine expanding out through the top of the head, the bottom of the feet in all directions. And when you draw back, imagine drawing back through all directions. So squat down slightly, gathering into lower dentaean. So expanding out. And gathering back. The awareness moving beyond the physical. few more times. The whole body expanded out. Gathering blue sky back inside. Expanding out into blue sky. Draw blue sky back, back inside. And then we'll finish in a more traditional way by allowing the hands to rise up through the body, connecting up into blue sky, all the way up. And at the top, they open out the sides, the mind expanded out in all directions. At shoulder height, the palms turn up and the hands move forwards. And then middle fingers connect back towards the center of the head, upper dantian, Shenji Palace, bright, full of blue sky. She is abundant. Elbows draw back close to the body, middle fingers connect to the sides of the chest, connecting into middle dantian. And here all functions are normal. Everything is healthy. She is abundant. The fingers push back into the space behind. They expand out, unwinding and expanding, out in blue sky, and then draw Hunyuan Chi, draw blue sky back, back into lower dantian. Palm rests on palm, rests on duchi, rests on the navel. Lower dantian, she is abundant. 
and the mind rests in Lava Dantan. Quiet and centered. Full of chi, full of potential, full of blue sky. Then release the hands to the sides. <clears throat> Gently ease out. Gently come back into the space, back into the physical. And once you've come back, we'll finish with a joyful exclamation in Chinese. And it's how, how is good, and la, la is already. So it's how, la. And we do it with the hands up on a count of two. So one, two, how, la. Oh, one more, just because I love it. How, la. Thank you. Thank you. Please feel free to stay and chat. I'm aware I've overrun slightly, so if you need to disappear, please disappear. Thank you, John, very much. See you next week. Thank you. Take care. See you next week. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Take Bye. care. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Cheers. Take Bye. care. Bye. John, I think I might be the only one here. I just wanted to ask you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some of those moves and uh, the mantras are similar to um, Master Gu from, is it Mr. Gu from Chi, the Chi Center in New Mexico? Ming Tong, yeah. Yeah, I've been following some of his videos. I find them very powerful. Um, and that is the healing form that I've been looking for. So I'm very pleased that you're doing this. Yeah, Ming Tong is, um, I spent some time with him a few years ago. He came over to the UK and we spent